Let's do a few examples here to, to get us some practice factoring. Okay, so I told you that if you have a coefficient in front of the x, then you want to take the coefficient and multiply it by the last term, right? Well, that's true, but, but I also told you that if you have a common factor between all terms, that you have to take that out first. So don't forget to, to look for that. And in our case, we're going to simplify things a lot if we realize that 16 goes into 64 and 48. So we're going to take that 16 out. We'll be left with x squared plus 4x plus 3. So that was a big help to us, realizing that 16 times 4 was 64 and 16 times 3 was 48. Okay, and now we're going to just factor like we normally would. The factors of 3, positive 3, that add up to 4. Well, that's easy. That's just 1 and 3. 1 plus 3 equals 4. And so this is going to factor really, really nicely, quick and easy. This will become 16 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. Okay. And that's that. There's nothing, nothing too difficult about this problem. All right. Let's move on from there. Here we have something that looks like a mess. And if you remember, I said the the thing we're going to try when we're doing, when we're doing a, a, a factoring a polynomial of degree three, at least for now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and group. So we're going to make one group, one half x cubed plus seven halves x squared plus three x plus twenty one. Okay, now the, the key to this problem is realizing what factors out of this expression. Of course we have an x squared, at least an x squared in both terms, but what else do we have? We also have a one-half. So this is really one-half times x squared. And I think the easiest way to see that is just to hang tight for a second. This will be x plus 7. What happens if we multiply one-half x squared times x? Well, we're going to get one-half x cubed. What happens if we multiply one-half x squared times 7? Well, if we look over on the side real quick, 1 half x squared times 7 can really be thought of as 1 over 2 times x squared over 1 times 7 over 1. So if you didn't think about it like this, now you can see it. And this just simplifies too. We're going to rearrange things, but it's just going to be 7 halves x squared. So 1 half x squared times 7 really is 7 halves x squared. So we factor that out. And this is what we were left with. Okay. On the other side, what are we going to factor out? Plus, we can factor out a 3. So let's do that. And then on 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 7 is 21. Okay. And it turns out that, that this worked out nicely. We have an x plus 7 in both terms. So this will become 1 half x squared plus 3 times by x plus 7. Okay, so try not to let these fractions throw you off too much. Just keep with your regular game plan and, and hopefully you'll, you'll see at this point what you're allowed to do. All right, let's, let's move on. Oh, I'm, I wrote this problem wrong. There we go. I just missed an x. How are we going to solve this problem? We haven't looked at a fifth degree polynomial yet, but hopefully you can realize that there's at least one x in every term. So let's pull an x out. So this will become x times x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 24. And now let's do a little bit of rewriting. So this is x times x squared squared plus 5 
x squared minus 24. So I just rewrote this x to the fourth as x squared squared and this x squared I just kind of grouped with itself just so you can kind of see a little bit better what's going on. So normally this whole thing would be an x and this whole thing would be an x but instead it's an x squared and an x squared. So let's just continue as if it were an x. That's what we're thinking in our in our heads. So this is just a normal a normal normal like we would always do. So this is negative 24. We have to find the factors that add up to 5. Well, I'm just going to think to myself real quick, well, maybe 12 and 2, no, that won't ever add up to 5. What else goes into 24? Uh, and I know that 3 and 8 go into 24. So I think we've actually already even seen something very similar to this, where we have negative 3 and positive 8 add up to positive 5. Okay, so this whole thing is going gonna, is gonna to work out to be x times x squared minus 3 times x squared plus 8. Oop, what am I doing here? x squared plus 8. Okay, so I skipped, a, I, I might have in your head skipped a couple steps, but I really didn't because this was, this was the normal way we factor. We just, we almost, we almost look at this and say to ourselves, oh, let me draw, let me do this down here. We look at this and we say to ourselves, well, that looks a lot like x squared plus 5x minus 24. And that's, that's the easiest case we have where we just find the two factors and, and that's it. Bada bing, we're done. But instead of x squared and x, we have an x squared squared and an x squared. So this x gets replaced wherever there was supposed to be an x, right? This would factor to x minus 3 and x squared, uh, sorry, x plus 8. Wherever there was supposed to be an x, there's now an x squared. Because where there was supposed to be an x here, we actually had an x squared up here. Okay, I've explained that already in, in a separate video, but I hope that this kind of substitution process doesn't confuse you. Anyways, let's, let's move forward. Alright, so we're left with this last example. Now, can we pull anything out? Is there any common factor? Well, no, 11 is prime, so that doesn't have a common factor with 6. Doesn't look like we're, we have a whole lot of options, so let's Let's try our method where we actually take this 6 and we multiply by this 10. And we're going to come out with 60. And now we're going to have to find the factors of 60 that add up to negative 11. So, sorry, negative 60. Well, let's see. Let's just try and brainstorm. 10 and 6 will never be 11. Uh, maybe 2 and, and 30. No, that will never work. 3 and 20. That will never work. What about... 4 and 15. That could work. That could work. Positive 4 and negative 15, these add to be negative 11. Okay, so we found our factors 4 and 15. And what do we do with them? Well, we start our grouping process. 6x squared, this is going to be plus 4 minus 15. So, sorry, plus 4, let me make this a little neater. Plus 4x minus 15x and we leave that 10 alone. Okay, and now let's group this. This is going to be 6x squared plus 4x plus negative 15x minus 10. Let's see what comes out of there. So in this left hand we're going to get a 2x and then what's left is 3x plus 2. In this right hand side we're going to get out a negative 3, uh, sorry, a negative 5 and what will be left is 3x plus 2. So we have the same factor here and here. This whole thing works out to be 2x minus 5 times 3x plus 2. So I'm sorry that I'm a little bit rushing through this. I'm running out of time on this video. We've gone through this type of example before. Go back and watch the video where I take a little more time explaining it and then see if you can come back and, and understand this video if you don't, if you're having trouble with it now. Okay, see you in the next video.